Now, why is this important right now? Well, midlife is full of a lot of life, big life changes. Everything from empty nesting to career moves or even retirement. Sometimes there are health changes for ourselves or our loved ones. We experience various different kinds of loss. It's a lot. And the famous midlife crisis often really just comes from a fear of change and a fear of the unknown. If we haven't anticipated this change or we don't understand what's happening, it becomes a scary thing. So let's break down some specific strategies to help you process change with optimism and confidence. Here are five actionable steps to get you started. First, and I would argue the most important, is to reframe your mindset. Instead of seeing change as a threat, think of it as an opportunity. Ask yourself, what new skills or awareness can I gain from this? How can it enrich my life? How can I be a better person having gone through this change? So as a first step, try this. The next time you face change or are about to face change, write down three positive outcomes that could possibly come from it. Hold these positive outcomes in your mind as you go through the change. Visualize them. Where are you? What are you doing? What would it feel like to have those positive outcomes come true? Better yet, write it down and keep it handy. As you visualize and really feel what it feels like to have those positive outcomes, sit with that feeling for a bit. Remember what that feels like. Your brain and your body will remember that feeling and they'll help you move towards it during the process. Next, set small achievable goals. Big changes can be really overwhelming if you look at them in their totality. But if you break them down into smaller, more manageable changes and steps, this will help you make steady progress without feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes it's helpful to start with the end in mind and work backwards until you get to that first actionable step. So create an action plan. For example, if you're considering a career change, but really aren't sure what you want to do, that's a big, scary change to have happen. It's a lot to think about. So instead of starting with that, start by setting a goal to research one new career path per week. If you just became an empty nester, pick one of the things you can do now that maybe you couldn't do before the kids were out of the house and do that thing. And then the next thing, and then the next thing, baby steps. The third part of the strategy is to build a support network. Surrounding yourself with support people who encourage and inspire you can help you navigate change so much easier. Having a network of friends, family, a therapist, or even a mentor can provide valuable perspective and motivation. Seek out people who have been through this change themselves and ask them what they learned and maybe what they would do differently. You might even find a support group of some kind. A side benefit of doing this step is that it also addresses one of the fears that most people have as they get into their 50s and 60s that I talk about in another video. I'll put a link in the description. So make a list of people and resources that you can tap for help. Reach out to someone on that list and share your thoughts and challenges about the changes that you're facing. Don't be afraid to ask for their support explicitly. People love to feel like they have insights and wisdom that they can help other people with. Maybe even set up a regular check-in with them to discuss your progress and any challenges. Sometimes just having someone to talk to can make a huge difference. Bonus tip, if you have the emotional bandwidth, ask them if they have any challenges that they might need help thinking through. Anything that you could help them with. Being supportive of others is beneficial to you and can help you learn from what other people are dealing with and how they're overcoming their challenges. Learning together. The fourth part of the strategy is to focus on self-care. Now, I know this can sound really cliche, but during times of significant change, it's easy to neglect self-care. But taking care of yourself physically and mentally is crucial. 
when you're feeling good, you'll handle change more effectively. So the first step, make a list of your go-to self-care activities that typically work for you. And keep that list handy so that when you're feeling depleted or anxious or overwhelmed, you have a list of ideas all ready to go. Better yet, develop self-care routines ahead of time that preempt the crisis situation. It could be as simple as taking daily walks, listening to your favorite music first thing in the morning, taking a run, reading a good book, whatever restores you and gives you energy Schedule these activities into your week on a regular basis and stick to them. Self-care isn't just about spa visits. Times of big change are exactly when you should be sure to keep up on things like doctor's appointments, connecting with loved ones, taking your daily vitamins, all of the basics. Remember that taking care of yourself isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. The final step is actually one that's an ongoing step embracing lifelong learning. Make sure you glean all of the learning you possibly can during and after the change you're experiencing, because those learnings can help you navigate other changes a little bit easier in the future. This is where a journaling practice can come in really handy. If you don't journal, maybe think about just jotting down some notes along the way, simple bullet points even. The act of writing things down in whatever form helps our brain process and remember. You might also take some time to reflect on past changes in your life that may have felt a little scary. What positive outcomes came from those changes? Seeing change as an opportunity to learn and grow fosters lifelong learning and keeps your brain engaged and open to new experiences. If you'd like some help with this part, I made a worksheet. There's a link in the description to a free PDF download with some prompts and steps to try, including all of the ones listed above. Remember that navigating change in your 50s or any time doesn't just have to mean surviving. It can absolutely be about thriving. Embracing these strategies can help you turn uncertainty into opportunity and make this stage of life one of the most fulfilling. This is a gift to your future self the future self who's going to go through way many more changes. So if you reframe your mindset, set small goals, build a support network, focus on self-care and embrace lifelong learning, you'll lessen your fears and approach change with a more confidence and optimism. These are the things I wish I had been more aware of as I approached my fifties. I have more advice for my former self in this video, including navigating crisis and chaos. Check it out next. And also, don't forget to dance.